at the end of the day, I mean, everyone's going to have an opinion. People aren't going to like you. People are going to like, people are going to talk smack. People are going to, you know, not agree with what you're doing. People are going to think, oh, it may not be what's the best thing for you. But at the end of the day, like you, you know what the best thing for you is. It's the Health in the Real World podcast. It's time to start the show with Chris Jenke as your host. Here to give you everything that you need when it comes to fitness strategies. We keep it simple and easy. It's your roadmap to get healthy. You don't need equipment and you don't need a gym. Just the right strategies to get you fit and trim. The Health in the Real World podcast is sponsored by most exercises and workouts, whether they be running, biking, elliptical, rowing machine, traditional weightlifting, or even CrossFit, do not give you a balanced workout. And when you do workouts that neglect even one area, you're out of balance, resulting in pain and injury as well. Achieve your goals with the fitness program your chiropractor would love. Visit chrisjenke.com slash pod to watch the free video. Hello and welcome. This is Chris Jenke and welcome to Health in the Real World. We're here today with Amelia Bartolino. Amelia, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? Good, good. Well, thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. Yeah, for um, sure. And we're going to talk today. You are a trainer, right? Tell mm-hmm. me a little bit about uh, the type of clients that you help uh, and, and how you got into the business a little bit. Sure. So I um, the type of clients that I tend to go for are ones that are kind of like me. I feel like my journey started as a teenage, like young teenage girl who I really didn't know what, I didn't really know what to do, to be honest with you. Um, I was a, um, I was a cross country track runner. So running, running, running. Um, And all I knew is I wanted to start getting better and I wanted to feel my body better but I really didn't know how um and I kind of had some struggles where I really didn't feel my body properly and my performance suffered so the clientele that I kind of go for for are girls that were around that age who were trying to build stronger bodies um because the media it just it it's so confusing it's so confusing and I don't want to see other girls go through that again Mm -hmm. So you're training, you're training like high schoolers typically, is that kind of your age group that you train or a little bit of So, um, more so like high school into college are the girls that I really tend to connect with the most. I do have some older clients. Um, they work their butts off though. Um, but for the most part, like my, the clientele that I tend to usually gravitate towards me is the ones who are like 18, 19, mid twenties. Got it. So I, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I've definitely come across this with a lot of female trainers and guests that I've had on the show. And they say that, mm-hmm. that you're sort of fed this idea of cardio, right? And you even mentioned you're a runner. Um, mm-hmm. Is there like kind of a lot of myth busting that happens? Like, do you have a hard time getting females to want to lift weights, for example? Um, that's actually something that I, I don't have a hard time getting them to do. Um, cause I, I almost use myself as an example. Like I try and empathize with them. Cause that's what I, when I was, you know, a runner in high school, that's what I thought, you know, I wanted to be shredded. And I thought that you had to run to do that. And I was like, why am I not building muscle? Like I didn't understand the process to do it. Like I didn't, I wasn't educated on it at the time. Um, so then what I do with my clients is I try and break down everything into to be as simple as possible and I say to them too I'm like listen do like I use myself as an example like I had the same fear as you I was like I kind of had to trust my coaches to make to know that I was being led in the right direction and here's the science behind it you know Mm -hmm. they always want to know why and I feel like explaining the why is what gets them to be like oh okay that makes sense right Yeah, definitely a good question to be asking to make sure that your trainer kind of has an idea of why they're doing certain things. Did, did your, um, did your cross country coaches sort of push a more well-rounded type of program or was that something you had to go out and discover on your own? 
Um, unfortunately, as far as weightlifting goes, our program really wasn't something that was set in stone. I mean, we were told to go to the weight room and do squats and bench press, you know, um, so it wasn't really something that we were educated on too, too much. I mean, form stuff, yeah, um, but we pretty much, because it was high school, we pretty much stuck to, um, stuck to running. Um, and then my biggest thing, which I wish um, they spoke about was nutrition. Um, I really think that that was something that they should have brought up, especially being, um, you know, an athlete, we were, it's intense, you know, you're running for two hours a day. So I really wish that they, um, they touched on that more. So what's, um, yeah, I agree with you hundred percent. I ran cross country, played basketball in high school and nobody said anything Euro. about what to eat. And, you know, as a kid, you're just eating what tastes good and you really don't care. Right. Mm -hmm. um, or maybe, or you care, you just don't know what, so what do you tell your clients as far as nutrition goes then? Like, what's the first step in getting healthy, staying healthy, um, as far as nutrition specifically, what do you tend to tell people? So the biggest thing that I find, especially like in the field I'm in is they're not getting enough protein and what happens is they kind of have this preconceived idea that carbs are bad. Um, and that's been across the board for as long as I, I've been like training mm -hmm. is they come to me and they're like, oh, I've been trying to eat less carbs. And I ask them, I'm like, well, why are you trying to eat less carbs? They're like, oh, cause they make me fat. But what they don't understand is the fact that each macronutrient has its specific purpose. And what they think is carbohydrates are bad. They make you fat. But the issue is, is oftentimes it's not the carb that's the issue it's the fact that they're not even getting enough protein right in their diet to build muscle so they're doing cardio which is just burning burning your muscle they're only eating carbs so you're not building any muscle you know you don't have the uh, resources to build muscle and ultimately your physical appearance suffers or you don't have the progress that you want to see so it's explaining that to them and having them really understand what a carb is and does what a protein is and does and what a fat is and does. Yeah. I think that's a good point. Like instead of trying to burn carbs, right. Especially like you said, especially females and probably around that age, there are certain sort of societal expectations, right. And mm -hmm. them wanting to fit a certain mold. And I think that's a, a good distinction that like, Hey, if you want to be shredded and you want to be toned, the best thing for you to do is not to be like subtracting carbs. It should be adding muscle right like create enough resistance and enough tension in your your muscles and your bones and your joints to facilitate your body wanting to add muscle and then of course like you said you have to add the the building blocks you have to eat enough protein to actually have that happen and then i'm sure it's easy at that point right like switching your mind to like okay i'm going to try to add a little bit of muscle do you find that it's easier for your clients to kind of get to that goal weight or that goal physique than if they're just trying to cut carbs right um I feel like it's I wouldn't say it's easy um I had to say it's kind of it's almost challenging because they don't it doesn't click for them until mm. they see the results. the results yeah and the thing is right. often, like, they have to trust you and they have to trust that like you're like their body is in your hands so I mean as far as kind of changing their mindset and how they think about it the only way I could really like put it into perspective for them is either a like from them seeing the results themselves, or I try and tell my story a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. I explain to them, you know, what I went through when it comes to the confusion with food and learning. And I mean, I went to school for seven years for nutrition. So like, I mean, and, it, and I'm still learning. I can only imagine what it's like to not have that background. Like it's so confusing. Well, you're subject to the media at that point. Right. Um, right. So as far as changing their mindset, I kind of had to say, listen, like, I get where you're coming from. Um, I was like, I had to learn it myself where I had to see myself put on muscle and, you know, muscles metabolically active. So that's when you start to, you know, your basal metabolic rate increases and your, um, your body fat percentage will go down. So it's because words, words don't mean anything unless they see it. Right. Unfortunately. So um, actually, this is a good kind of segue into, we'll get into some specifics with nutrition. Yeah. As far as, do you, do you recommend 
calorie counting specifically or do you say like okay here's like your range of different types of food that you eat and just eat until you're full you mentioned basal metabolic rate mm -hmm. um maybe explain that a little bit and how that plays into fat loss versus like muscle loss you know you know what i mean like safe yeah. weight loss um mm -hmm. give like i know this is going to be very high level uh no, broad no. big picture but what what do you tell people as far as getting them into sort of thinking like that yeah so as so starting with the basal metabolic rate part so what that is it's basically i in layman's terms i always say it's pretty much it's the calories that you burn literally just getting up in the morning and being you like if you were to sit in bed all day at the body composition you're at because more muscle means you're burning more calories but if you were to just get up and sit in bed all day this is the amount of calories that you would burn that you would burn um and like i use an in body which is a machine it's a biological impedance analysis so that that's pretty accurate um but also you can use some like calculations to kind of get a general range um but so that's where like we start with is like your basal metabolic rate um and the more muscle you have the higher it is um so then from there i kind of segue into you know i let them know like, okay, so for example, say your BMR basal metabolic rate is 1400 calories. Most of the time, my clients aren't even eating that. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times, yeah, a lot of times they're eating, they're eating less than that. Um, and then there are times where they're, they completely overshoot it. And that, that's what confuses um, the system quite a bit. Um, so when it comes to explaining to them that you need to eat in order to get your metabolism to increase to fuel your muscles because you're a lot of people think oh like i want to lose weight i gotta cut i gotta cut calories right and yes that is true but the composition of what you're eating does matter where you know you have to make sure you're getting enough protein to build more muscle um you have to make sure you're getting enough carbs to fuel that muscle and then fat obviously for hormones and and stuff like that so kind of breaking it down and explaining that to them piece by piece um, to show them that it does make a difference. Like people always think, oh, calories in, calories out. And unfortunately, it's not, it's not the case. You know, right. you really are, you are what you eat pretty much. Right. Type of calories in is really what's important. So I, I really like um, what you're saying with this example of, let's say your BMR is 1400 calories. Mm -hmm. um, and then you're actually seeing people eat fewer than 1400 calories, which is like, you do not ever want to do that because that's, you're not, you're not even hitting the number of calories that you're actually burning. Right. Cause if your BMR is 1400, that's just to like lay in bed like a slob all day, but mm -hmm. your activity, let's say you burn another, like, let's say 600 just to keep it round round number. Cause now you're at 2000. Yeah. 2000 2, calories, which you actually burn, right? Mm -hmm. um, it, that range, how do you get somebody to navigate that range, right? 1400 is just to keep you alive. Yeah. 2000 is what you're actually burning. Somebody wants to lose a little bit of weight. Is there um, a number you tell them to hit in that range? Uh, um, not just from my personal experience. I prefer, this is also just, I mean, this is a preference and um, just what I've seen works better um is a lot of times people need to start like you want long-term results you got to start slow you can't just jump into something and i mean just like hit like hit the ground running i mean some people some people can um don't get me wrong on that part but as far as like hitting caloric goals like eating more than you normally eat is uncomfortable like it's uncomfortable on your stomach and you know, your body has to get used to that. So what I often recommend is I, I say, you know, start, start by adding a little something extra at breakfast. So say somebody is only eating, um, I find a lot of times people just eat like cereal. I'll be mm -hmm. like, okay, like eat. So for this week, what we're going to do is you're going to have like two hard boiled eggs with breakfast or make two scrambled eggs with breakfast just to kind of get them used to eating more protein and eating, eating a little bit more doing that for a week, then kind of seeing how we feel and then moving on to the next step. Because nice. baby steps, it, they're more likely to adhere to those and it, it creates a habit and a lifestyle change as opposed to just hitting the ground running. Right. 
I find that to be more successful. I think that's a good idea. Just that one change, more protein, a little bit of healthy fat for breakfast instead of overwhelming them with a whole like list of things that they have to eat and, you know, meal prepping and all that crazy stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Or can't eat. So a lot of times people um, will say like, oh, I can't eat this. I can't eat this. I can't eat this. But it's like, what can you, like, you want to focus on what you can eat. Yes. If you focus on what you can eat, it's kind of like, ugh, you know. Right. And then you start thinking about the cake and ice cream and the candy and everything you can't eat. And Mm -hmm. yeah, it's no fun. Uh, Amelia, what do you tell people who have been working out for a while and they, for whatever reason, they fall off the wagon and they sort of like, I don't know, they, they just lose their motivation. Like, do you have a, a pep talk for them? What would you tell that person? Um, so I know I do have a few clients who like, they were worked out a little bit and they took some time off. Cause a lot of, um, with COVID and everything I know really like, um, it struck everyone pretty hard as far as motivation goes. And like my, I mean, I'm blessed where like my clients come in and like they're, they're, they want to make a change. Like they're in this stage of, of action where they want to make, they're ready to make that change. But oftentimes they put themselves down um, during that, during that time. So it's not so much getting them to stay motivated I'm sorry, it's not as much as getting them motivated, it's having them stay motivated. Because mm-hmm. um, they'll start off, they like make, they take the step, but then once they start, they don't see results right away. That can really frustrate some people. And it's about like letting them know, listen, like it's a slow process. It's not gonna happen overnight. Um, you just have to be consistent and, and stay patient and just keep, keep doing what you're doing and you'll, it'll be worth it and pay off. Gotcha. Yeah. Slow process. Got to be consistent for a, a, a long enough duration to, to see results. Right. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Amelia, I want to, I have a one final question that I let people go like very big picture. So yeah. not, not just health and fitness, but like life goals in general, you know, life principles. If you were invited to, let's say, give a, a keynote speech at a corporation or maybe a commencement speech to, um, to a graduating class at a university. What's like your one to two minute motivational speech for these people to help them kind of get the most out of life? Like principles that you've learned along the way, um, really big picture, like, you know, just how to get the most out of life. What would you tell them? Um, I would definitely tell them, don't care what anyone else thinks. Um, at the end of the day, I mean, everyone's going to have an opinion. People aren't going to like you. People are going to ha- like, people are going to talk smack. People are going to, you know, not agree with what you're doing. People are going to think, oh, it may not be what's the best thing for you. But at the end of the day, like you, you know what the best thing for you is. Like someone can, you know, a lot of times people take their own preconceived, you know, experience um, ideas or they take um, their past experiences and project it on, onto other people. Um, which I get, you know, like with parents and stuff, you know, it's out of love and, you know, they want to protect you. But at the end of the day, like you have to make the mistakes yourself. You have to find out yourself. And I just think that caring what people think really takes away from living your life to the fullest. Um, You only get one life and to spend it caring what other people think, in my opinion, is honestly a waste of time. Because you can't make everyone happy and you might as well make yourself happy first because making other people happy, it's, you can't do it all. And I, like, I always say like my biggest fear is like a lot of times is, is not, it's not dying, but it's not living, you know, like getting to my time in adulthood and I will look back on my life and look back and be like, yeah, like I did everything I wanted to do and I didn't care what anyone thought. And, you know, I didn't let anyone get in my way. And cause at the end of the day, like I said, like you get, you get one life. So that's my biggest message. That's what I tell my young girls. I'm like, do everything that I was like, don't let anybody tell you, you can't do something. Cause again, they, they're just saying that because they can't see themselves doing it. So they're going to project that onto you. 
Yeah, hundred percent. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, okay, I want to give people to uh, a chance to get in touch with you, your programs. How do people get in touch with you? Like your website, social media. Um, so you can get in touch with me. I have my Instagram page. It's Amelia B underscore fit. And you guys could uh, DM me, message me, um, any questions that you guys have. Um, I do online nutrition coaching. So if anyone's interested in that, um, I do that as well. But yeah, Instagram is probably the best bet. Instagram. Okay, cool. Sounds good. Well, Amelia Bartolino, thank you so much for joining me today, Health in the Real World. I wish you all the best with your um, nutrition coaching and your training. And thank you again for being on Health in the Real World. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to the Health in the Real World show. Make sure to like and subscribe and comment down below. Visit mycorebalance.com to learn more.